Mm-hmm. So y'all met for dinner, mm-hmm. started talking about this book, The Gordian mm-hmm. Protocol, y'all wanted mm-hmm. to make. What was the process going through? I know a lot of back and forth, but how did y'all go about reconstructing at this point? I think, didn't I go home and send you an email? Mm-hmm. I know that we talked about it in the restaurant, but not at huge, enormous length. Um, we <clears throat> talked about it enough for me to explain to you what my basic idea was and how long it had been hanging around. Mm-hmm. I, mean, this, the, I pitched this storyline to Jim Bang in the same letter that I pitched Honor Harrington in. That's how long I have wanted to write these stories. Okay. And that's one reason I'm enjoying the hell out of it now, working with Jacob on them. So how long before you found out he didn't even want to do a time travel book? After we (laughs) turned the manuscript in. (laughs) I waited that long. I'm like, okay, now this is a done deal. Now I feel safe telling David that I... I hate time travel stories. (laughs) Two books into the series now. <laughs> well, oh, third. But, but, it, it, but it's, the thing is that these are not just time travel novels. Okay? It's not just, I'm going to go back in the past, I'm going to change the past, somebody else is going to try and keep me from changing the past. It's, this, is, this, is a, this is seriously more akin to H. Bean Piper's Paratime novels. With the addition that in, in, in Piper's novels, you couldn't go back in time. You could only go across parallel universes. Okay? And this has the additional component added to it. Um, but there's some of the same problems present themselves to the agencies charged in, in, in dealing Mm-hmm. With these things, Gordian Division has it worse than the Paracops in one respect, because they have to worry about somebody going back and trying to change the past. Okay, now they've established that they can't change their past; they can only change somebody else's. Um, but they've also established that somebody else changes their past, you can wipe out our universe because we're living in a Jacob book. But anyway, I but I digress. <laughs> hey, Jacob and David, <laughs> but. By our destructive <laughs> powers combined. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I did, you know, I, I did, up until Jacob and I destroyed the entire universe, I did, I think, hold the record for Bane. I killed off the inhabitants of 5,000 star systems <laughs> off camera. <laughs> you know, it's just like, well, they all died. Okay, right, I'm going. They're like, what? <laughs> you know, but, you know, but that, was, that was in my early days, you know. But So, so getting back to the, uh, yeah. um, how... The, the, the early parts of, uh, of Gordian, the, the planning work is that mm-hmm. uh, from, from that initial meeting, I kind of w- went off and I was thinking about, okay, well, how would the time travels, r- the time travel rules work to make these story elements? I get this all- email from us here. Three different models I'm looking at here. <laughs> yeah. And so I had, you know, I had, had a write up I, I put together and I had different ideas and, and thoughts and whatnot and there was a discussion and I'm amazed that I was able to do this to David Weber who's <laughs> easily one of the smartest people I have ever met and I'm he going to very few people <laughs> yeah, I don't see it he, and, <laughs> thank you <laughs> and literally I'm going over my ideas for the time travel rules the, the first pass at them and and David it was kind of like this. And then he went... <laughs> and I'm like, oh no. You broke him. <laughs> I <laughs> just blew David Weber's mind. I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> so we kind of took that back, <laughs> took the feedback, refined it, <laughs> submitted a second one, which was much more well-received. <laughs> It actually did have a lot of the elements oh, from yeah. that first pass. Yes, it did. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, but it was streamlined significantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 the biggest problem, if I if I recall correctly, and bear in mind this is pre-concussion and all of other things, but, um, but the biggest problem was not that what he had done didn't hang together 
and didn't make perfectly good sense. The problem is that writing a story around its intricacies uh, and so forth was going to be very, very difficult. And we would have been David Weber ordering a pizza with the background on it, explaining it to the reader all the way through. Um, and believe it or not, I, I really tried to not do that unless it's necessary to kind of explain how the story worked. There was simplification and streamlining yes, that yes. took place between version one and version two. But this is why you have versions and yes. feedback and, a, yes. you know. Well, one of the things that, that is, is cool uh, about working with Jake is that versions do go back and forth, okay? Um, and as a general rule, neither of us is so invested in what we did that we can't look at what the other person is suggesting as a possible mod. Now, I was, I was pretty sick, actually, when... Uh, we handed in. Uh, oh no, wait, it wasn't no. that? No, no. We <laughs> well, handed you were you were sick back then too. <laughs> yes, too. You, you've been through a lot recently. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm getting old. I know. Kind of you not to pa draw attention to it. Yeah. But um, the um, when when we when we handed in not the Gordian but uh, the Valkyrie, Valkyrie. Protocol, um, I was having the flu and I uh, was doing a silver master course with one student over the girls uh, Michael's. Uh, private school it completely destroyed my voice you know kind of thing <laughs> can't understand why i use it so little you know anyway. <laughs> um anyway i i it the book worked for me okay it hung together and, and 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 it was good um and so i went ahead and sent it in and uh tony said you know we need a little more of the feel of the different historical eras in it something okay so I started working on it, and I got into the 5th century, and I was like, oh my god, I'm totally gutting. What I, I kept the skeleton mm -hmm. of what Jacob had done. I was saying, I'm, I'm introducing characters, and, you know, up in the word count. You know, so, I, so I told Jacob, I said, you know, I hope this isn't, you know, due to, he, said, he said, man, he said, when I wrote those chapters, I was praying that you'd come in here and do something, because I knew that wasn't my strength. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean... It, it was like, okay, those chapters, when, when I was doing the, uh, the first draft, were the hardest chapters for me to write. And while I didn't think they were bad, I think in terms of the overall quality of the book, were the lowest quality portion of, of the book. Yeah. Well, the, prob the biggest problem with them wasn't that the quality of the writing wasn't there. It was that, and I think it's because you're not a historian in part, they were very sparse in terms of the background. And what happens in them is critical to how the second half of the novel unfolds. So by I, we spend more time in the fifth century after the rewrite, mm -hmm. and you see a lot more of the dynamics and the motivations of everybody involved. Um, and I think it's definitely a stronger book for having that in it. But that is one of those elements that I'm talking about where I say that Jacob and I complement each other um, as writers and storytellers mm -hmm. because that's my thing, okay? And building technologies is his thing. Uh, and, <laughs> Which and, I enjoy. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I like world building, okay? But any world building that I do is done from the perspective of somebody who is, I think, a moderately well-informed layman who was a humanities major, okay? So I'm confident about the sociological constraints, the historical models, the what you might call the wetware side of, of, of the books. The hardware side, I try to avoid <laughs> stepping on my sword rather than being really, really blue sky on how I'm gonna how I'm gonna make all this work, um, and working with Jacob, I can say Jacob, we need some blue sky. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and he comes back and says, "All right, sit down, buckle up." <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's and, great. And and that kind of ties back to when I was doing the the detailed design work for for the admin mm -hmm. and for for Cisco, and you know, I had those kind of kind of the the 
borders of, of the portrait from, from David, the overall shape mm -hmm. that these two societies and their roles in the story. But in terms of fleshing in you know, all the details, like Jacob, this is and, and your he could, responsibility. He couldn't, he couldn't do it as a paint by numbers because I hadn't said, okay, this and this, 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 this. I had told him, this is what I need the society to be. <laughs> and then I had said, go you know, and do it. And he absolutely did his proud. And, um, and I remember, I'm like going through and putting together all these details and backgrounds about different aspects of the societies and like, you know, the admin prison system, which I totally did not think would be relevant to the story at all. <laughs> Works really, really well, you know. And I'm like, okay, I know, I know what David's going to say, but I'm going to send this to him anyway. And what he's going to say is that, Jacob, there are certain aspects of this I like, but we need to tone down the crazy. Oh, he let me keep everything. He left it in. <laughs>